Hello everyone, this is James with the HomeGage product team here to talk about the latest version of the HomeGage desktop software, version 5.5. First and foremost, to see what version you're on, you can always click Help About HomeGage, and you'll see that version number appear right there. If you have anything lower than 5.5 and you're watching this video, you can go ahead and click Help, check for updates. And if you have an update available, you'll see a message here that allows you to go ahead and download it. You can also go to your inspector dashboard on the left-hand navigation menu, all the way near the bottom, you'll see an option that says install HG5. When updating HomeGage, there are two possible errors you might experience. The first is when you're running the update from within the software, you click help, check for updates. It'll let you know the version you have and the version that's available. So we'll say we wanna download it. Now I already have it downloaded, so it's just prompting me if I wanna install it. Otherwise you'll see a progress bar there first. When you say that you're ready to install it, what can happen here is the installer launches before the software is fully closed in the background. When that happens, you'll get an error message telling you that HomeGage is in use. And all you want to do is click retry after a couple seconds on that message. If that doesn't work, you can always fully close HomeGage and run the installer directly by downloading it from your inspector dashboard by going to install HG5 on the lower side of the left hand menu. The other area you can encounter during the install process is a message telling you that there are certain files that can't be overwritten, and those are font files in particular. So when that comes up, you can always just click skip on those files. There's no changes to them, so you'll still have the same proper versions of those files. If you encounter either of those errors, hopefully those steps can help you get through that. Feel free to let us know at productfeedback at homegage.com. If you do run into any of those errors, we're working on making it so that you don't encounter those in the future. The first small improvement we have is a visual indicator of whether or not an entire component is complete. And complete means that all inspection items and styles and materials for a component are complete or excluded. And that's this blue checkbox you can see here next to garage roof. In the past, you'd actually have to click the components header to see that checkbox. So this makes it much easier at a glance while writing the report to make sure that the entire component is finished. By popular request, the next improvement we have is the ability to dismiss the dialogues that appear when you erase a comment or delete an itemized comment. So we've got a comment here that says clicks are time and time is money, and we know that is true. So when you click erase, you will now have the option to dismiss this prompt and never see it again. And when you do that, anytime you add a comment and click erase, you will no longer see that message. Now we have an empty itemized item here that we don't need anymore. So the same is true for deleting itemized comments. If I go ahead and click the X here, same prompt that always appeared is there. However, we also have a do not show this message again prompt. Now you can re-enable both of those if you want to keep those messages there. One is under options, comments options, prompt before erasing comments. The other is under options, general options, prompt before erasing itemized items. So if you prefer those to remain, you can keep those checked and you will see those prompts every time. All right, the next improvement requires a little bit of explanation. If you're not familiar with this feature, I'll run through it real quick and we'll talk about what the fix is. So you can add a style material option that automatically appends a comment to your report. And we have a few of those set up here. Their names appear in bold. Now I'll show you how to set that up in case you're not familiar. So with the component selected and the style option here, we'll go ahead and click edit T and that'll give us the list of everything that's available on the right hand side here. And we'll just choose one at random here and click the edit wrench. And this is where you can rename it, but also you can click modify auto comment list. We'll go ahead and click the plus and we'll just pull a random comment in here for demonstration purposes. You'll see now that it says one comment are included when this option is selected. You can add more than one as well. I wanna point out something important here as well. Down at the bottom here, you'll see inspection item parent. So this is telling you that all of these relate to the inspection item called roof coverings. So that's important because that's actually telling you where the auto comments are going to go if you have options that add comments automatically. Now the bug, that we had in prior builds was if you added a comment here, we'll get the message that tells you that's what it just did. You'd go over and you'd find the comment it added here. And if you wanted to remove that, maybe you selected three tab fiberglass by mistake, you would click it and when you came back, it would actually still be there. So that has been fixed. As you can see, it removed that comment successfully. Now there is one caveat to that that I want to explain. And that is if you make any edits to the comment after adding it, 
it'll no longer recognize and remove the comment automatically. So to demonstrate, I'll go to that comment it just added, and I'll just edit it. And we'll go back to Styles Materials and deselect 3-tab fiberglass. Now, when we do that, you'll see a message that says HG failed to remove the comment when unselecting the style and material option. And it gives you the text of the comment that it had trouble removing there. And this is, as you can see, because we made a change to it. It's expecting a comment that just says there's no trash compactor appliance. And we added the word edit to the end there. So this is why I pointed out where the uh, inspection item parents live, because this is where you're gonna wanna go look for the comment if you run into that problem. So it's usually pretty self-explanatory, but for instance, maybe you're under skylights and you wanna do the same thing and have a comment auto add, but you're not sure where it's gonna put it. This'll tell you. The inspection item parent is skylights, chimneys, and roof penetrations. So these correlate to these names here. So that's where you're gonna to wanna to go look for this comment that the software couldn't automatically remove. And then you can edit or remove it right there. All right, for the next small improvement here, it relates to bullet lists or unordered lists. As you can see, I have one set up here, but in the past, if I were to actually print the report, I would get a numbered list back. And this was due to an error in our editor. Now this usually would appear correct in HTML reports, but incorrect in PDF reports. The bullet list would appear as numbered lists in PDF reports. That has since been fixed, so you can use bullet lists and numbered lists interchangeably now, and they will both appear correctly on both the HTML and the PDF reports. The next improvement on the list is to the forms. So under the miscellaneous tab, you have forms here. And we have a handy feature called append to previous. So I've got an example set up here where I have the citizen's roof inspection form and I wanted to append an additional comments page to that. So I added it and then clicked the append to previous box. However, in the past, some users experienced an error where the entire preview report, uh, print preview rather, would be blank. So you'll see that it appears correctly now. We have the additional comments page added to the end of the report, but some users would just see a white form here. So this related to a feature we have under options, forms options called secure PDF forms. And we found that on some users' machines, using both secure PDF forms and the append to previous feature would cause these blank pages to appear. So this is no longer the case. If you do wanna use the secure PDF form feature and append to previous, uh, you can do so without any conflict. Next up, we have some changes to the components page, which is where you would do most of your duplication actions. So we're gonna click components. You can also click any of the other headers if you have multiple section containers, but we'll just go into components for this example. So the first uh, change that was made here to this page is the ability to change the name of a component as a one-off report specific action rather than a template action that's going to affect all your future reports. So I'm gonna click Save T because we did make some changes earlier, uh, but just to demonstrate here how you can do this, you can click a component name here and then click the edit wrench next to duplicate sections. So you'll see now that you can change the name here or you can choose from the names that are set up in your template for this item. And it'll say right here, rename section for this report only. To edit section name for future reports, click the edit T button on the template toolbar instead. So we'll go ahead right now and change this to roof of addition just to demonstrate that this is not a template change. You'll notice we can't click save T. However, we can save the report. Now, as always in the past, if you do wanna change the name for all future reports, you can do so by clicking Edit T for Edit Template, and that's where you can change the name uh, permanently. And that'll affect all future reports because that is a report change, or a template change, rather. Now, keep in mind as well, all those options that appeared in the rename list, they all live here under Edit T. So you can add, edit, and remove them right here. And it says right here, repeat names for a quick entry. That's gonna to relate to the next feature as well. So we'll keep on rolling to that feature. So in the past, when you wanted to duplicate a component, you could only duplicate it once, and you would have to repeat that action multiple times if you wanted multiple duplicates. So to save some time, you can now actually add as many as you want. So we'll click a couple times here, and you'll see that we can, uh, we can type here, or you can select from your templates repeat names for quick entry. And you can add as many as you want. You can remove them by clicking and clicking remove. And now we've got three duplicates added at once. 
Now, while we're on the subject of those duplicate components, there's another improvement we made to how those work in the printed report. So currently, if I click through any of these duplicate items, you'll see that we have an overview section introduction and section footer for each of them. And because we duplicated them, they're all basically the same. So it's kind of redundant to have them all appear on the report. Now, this is an optional change. If you want to have them appear, maybe you're making changes to each one. That's perfectly fine. You can leave that as is. But if you want only the first item to show the section introduction and footer and all of the subsequent duplications to not show that redundant information, you can do that as a print change. So we're going to click print. We're going to click the miscellaneous tab. And you'll see we have a new option here that says skip header slash footer on duplicate sections. Now, if you want to use that, be sure to check it and also check save settings as default for future reports as you would with anything else on this page. And that way it'll always be enabled. And you'll see when we print this, we'll go down to the garage roof section here, or rather the roof section. And you'll notice we have the introduction here and the footer. However, on all of the subsequent duplicates, such as main roof and roof of addition, we don't have those redundant pieces of information. So that's going to save some space in your report. And again, that is optional. If you want to have it have the header and footer each time, just deselect that option in the print settings. All right, and that wraps up the list of changes to this version of the HomeGage desktop software, version 5.5. As always, if you have any feedback or concerns, feel free to email us at productfeedback at homegage.com. And we look forward to providing more updates in the near future, so keep your eyes peeled for more to come from HomeGage Desktop.